I am a really big fan of pricing tricks. Hacks, tricks, call them what you like. Some things take a half a second to do. Maybe no time at all to do. You, you leave out the dollar sign and it makes a 30% impact on whether or not someone is likely to purchase or not. These little tricks can have such a dramatic effect. And so on today's episode, I'm going to share a JCPenney pricing fail where JCPenney was undergoing a new strategy. And I think it was they removed their discounts. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the story. And it was just, it went against a lot of best practices and they suffered because of it. And then I'm going to share just three actionable tips. And actually this JCPenney pricing fail also has actionable tips. So here we go. Episode 307 of my daily marketing, daily digital marketing podcast. This is called JCPenney Pricing Strategy Misstep. It is from helloadvisor.com. When Ron Johnson, the innovative retailer that is credited with shaping both Apple and Target's retail image, stepped into the CEO role at JCPenney, he wanted to give JCPenney a 180-degree change. One big move Johnson wanted to make was to stamp out the discount image of the story JCPenney brand. This started with a new fair and square pricing strategy that got rid of all in-store discounts, sales, and coupons. The huge discounts commonly seen at JCPenney stores were no longer visible as Johnson's new pricing strategy came into play in January 2012. Instead, Johnson implemented an everyday prices strategy, which meant customers could expect the best deals every day at JCPenney rather than having to go search for discounts or coupons. Other changes Johnson installed was to target sales only during holidays or key retail promotion events, such as back to school. One of the last parts of Johnson's new pricing strategy was to change how prices were presented. This included changing sale prices to end in a zero rather than 99 and to not display the original price of the products, which would show consumers how much they were saving. So when you see prices $4.99 and it used to be $11, he removed that and instead just changed it to $5 and you wouldn't even see what the price used to be. Now here's where he effed up. Ending all sale prices with a zero turned out to be against common pricing psychology. Research conducted by the University of Chicago and MIT showed consumers are more likely to purchase items that end with a nine, even if it is more highly priced. In the study, they sold the same piece of clothing priced at $34, $39, and $44. Despite $34 being the cheapest option, the clothing made the most sales when priced at $39. That is crazy. The same goes for removing the original price tag as people are more prone to purchases when they feel like they are getting a good deal. Think of it this way. If you were to see a winter coat priced at $150, would you be more inclined to buy it if it said that it was previously sold at $1,000? or if it just had the $150 tag on it. My bet is that you would pick the first one. You would pick it if you saw that it was previously sold at $1,000. You would rather have that. To make matters worse for JCPenney, their competitor, Macy and Kohl's, decided to lower prices of similar products. JCPenney's bold move to renovate their pricing strategy ultimately led, here it goes, to a 20% decrease in sales in 2012 and long-term ramification for the company as the company continued to close stores. So what do we learn from this? If you're pricing something, end it with a nine and show how much money your customers are saving. And now here it's three more pricing tricks that I want to share. These are top of mind. I'm going to make videos about all of these. Actually, I made a video about two of these yesterday. I think I'm going to make a video maybe today about this JCPenney story because it's a, it's a good story. There's some actionable lessons there, but I have three more lessons. So the first lesson is removing a currency symbol from a price makes the price seem like less money. I thought this was so interesting. Let's take an expensive cocktail, for example. So I, when I'm in New York, I go to lots of very expensive places and I see this on all these chic places that price their items, be that a cocktail, be that a dish, whatever it is, without the currency symbol, without the dollar sign. Removing the currency symbol from a price makes it seem like it is less money. So you see an expensive cocktail and it is $22. It feels more affordable if you just see it written as 22. I thought that was a very easy, actionable piece of advice, something very interesting. Also, alternatively, what you can do is you can take the currency symbol and superscript it. So just put it up at the top and make it a small size of writing. So it's superscripted and that will also work to minimize 
the price and make it seem like it's less money. Another tactic to make a price seem like less money, and this one I thought was crazy. So there's new research and it shows that punctuation and decimals make a difference in how people perceive prices. So let's say you're selling high-end consulting and you're pricing it at $30,000 a month. Writing 30,000, three zero comma zero 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 decimal zero zero with the currency sign will seem like more money than just three zero 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 no decimal no comma so removing the punctuation and the decimals makes a price seem like less money what's crazy is that some of these tactics can go against each other so is it better to price something at twenty two dollars and ninety nine cents or is it better to price it at just 22? And I think actually there's a difference in circumstance. If you are at a discount store, you might wanna do the 99 because it'll make something feel like a discount. I think ending prices with 99 makes it feel like a discount in circumstances. But if you want something to feel high end, but still affordable, you might leave out the decimal. You might leave out the comma. You might make it just end at the price without the dot zero zero or dot 99. But anyway, I thought those were two interesting pieces of advice. And then the last one is prices that are more syllables feel like more money. And this is directly related to the decimals and comma. So I'll just read this. Say it out loud. In a paper published in the Journal of Consumer Psychology, researchers found that prices that contain more syllables seemed drastically higher to consumers. Not a little bit higher, but drastically higher. This is thanks to how we read a number and its fluency. The harder a number is to say, the worse we feel about it. So 1,999.99, 1,999 and 99 cents feels more expensive than 1,999 or 1999. The more syllables, the more we think it costs. Okay, I'm going to do a fourth one because I didn't know this and I'm just seeing it now. There's so many little interesting pricing tricks and hacks and I love these. This is the last one. People love physically small numbers. Studies have shown that placing your price in the bottom of a page rather than the top makes people perceive it as lower. Even crazier, the physical size of your font can influence people's understanding and feelings about it. Smaller fonts seem smaller in price. Okay, this is episode 307 of my daily digital marketing show, The Edward Show. I do this thing every day and I love it. I really enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I got some great coffee in front of me. Hope you found this show informative and actionable. And I hope you go and remove the commas and decimals from all your prices. And if the price is low ended in the 99 to make it feel like it's a discount, but if it's supposed to feel high end, then just keep at that dec decimal. So many little things that we can do. Keep it low syllables, not like I'm doing with this outro where I keep talking. Okay. Thank you so much. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.